got, let's take a phone call at you. Let's go to Rick. Rick, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Rick. It sounds like you're, you're setting up a like a company uh, company store compound type thing, like the old company uh, towns used to have in the mining towns and the mill towns. Mm -hmm. And like your secret location, I think, is totally absurd. How are people going to get to it? And ah. another thing is, uh, you know, people invest for this. What kind of say do they have in the way of governing it, or is it going to be a like a dictatorship? What you say goes. Ah. There we go. All right. First, the secret. Obviously, those who choose to do this will be told where it is. Yes. Okay, and you'll be taking them out there All to show. All serious buyers have to sign a non-disclosure as to the whereabouts at where it is. Anyone that wants that that thinks this through realizes that the location has to be kept secret. And of course, the buyers are going to know. I'll mm -hmm. give them GPS coordinates and mm -hmm. latitude and longitude, as well as a tour of the grounds okay. uh, before they ever have to pay a money. But any money. Um, but as for the governing uh, of Camelot, um, that that's that's where the old knights code comes in, and that's a whole nother topic right there. But but to to make it short, there will no there will be no king of Camelot. Mm. All right. Yeah. Um, it will. It's the whole you, round table concept. Yes. Huh? yes. So it, it's a democracy. It is. And if you think about it, you put men and women, all of them. Um, uh, everyone that, that joins Camelot, the head mm -hmm. of each household, male or female, will be a knight that represents their family at the round table. And as equals, we will sit at this round table and in all matters of importance, we will take a vote. And isn't that democracy in its rawest, po purest form? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I think it's wonderful. Um, and I hope everyone will abide by it. I mean, will you be doing, will there be a screening process? Because, again, to me, and again, this is nothing that's been built yet. It's a concept right now. It's a concept that he hopes to move forward with, and it's just intriguing in this climate that we have. Because there are a lot of concepts like this. W will there be a, a there? screening process? <laughs> well, we talked about the missile silos. I okay. mean, you're not the first one to think about emergency shelters. You sure. may be the first one to contain okay. it, but that's not a first. So my question is, I mean, will you be able to... Um, Screen folks coming in, I mean, how do you know you're not going to get someone who's going to be a rabble rouser? If there is, what kind of enforcement will there be? Things like that. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, what will happen is I if you're interested, you leave a, um, uh, a contact, some contact information on my website, www.newcamelot.info, and um, I'll give you a call personally, and mm -hmm. we'll chat, and I'll answer all your questions. And we'll feel each other out on the phone. And if we're on the same page, um, we'll pretty much get a good gist of each other. Yeah. Now, if um, uh, if somebody stands up in, in you know, uh, if, if a crisis did occur and we had yeah. to gather there, and somebody stood up and said, you know, to heck with you and to heck with you and I'm going to do what I want, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to take a sworn oath as well as a written uh, oath uh, that they will adhere to the old knight's code. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, we'll go down the code. Okay, and they and have to, and so it'll be majority rules, and then the, the group, as it comes down yes. to, will have to make some of the and decisions. The group will serve as King of Camelot. Mm -hmm. that is, I see the interesting concept, the round table and that. And again, it's just people coming together where the shelter is. They're all in one place, but you like the idea of a group being there But together. the wonderful thing about the, the code is, I mean, you get all religions, all races, yeah, all political opinions, and if they're all following the code, they're all on one gallant path, working together as a community to be self-sufficient and to protect their families. Gotcha. Um, Let's take a break on that note. When we come back, we'll continue, and we'll get into that code sum and some of the other ideas behind it, and we'll take more calls. 737-7587, Ron, Harold, and others, if you're there. What do you think of concepts like this and this concept? I mean, you certainly can't blame someone for thinking ahead about what they can do best for their family. W would something like this work? You know, it could. It all depends on the people involved. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this. Back on Morning Line, interesting concept this morning. Our guest with us this morning, David Rahm, founder of the idea New Camelot. And we've been talking about this model here, and it's a, an escape. It's nice to have you on. We had someone who waited yep. through the break. We have to take him real quick before he has to go. Ron, good morning. 
Are you there, Ron? Yeah, good morning, Nick. How you doing? Hey, Ron, go ahead. Hey, I'm a long-time viewer, first-time caller, but I just had to call in this morning. Sure. I think you guys are way, at, way, way out there. <coughs> I got a question and sure. uh, a comment. If you have a disaster, in, like I live in Gallatin, uh, how am I going to drive there? Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you, don't, you don't have a date when the disaster is going to happen. You know, how am I, how I going to get there? Yeah, is so it a little detail? Up and so forth. And, he, and you're good. And I know you got to run. That's a good question. I'll let him address but that. Well, let me what say else? Yeah. You, you're getting way out there with your shows. You need to come back to the base of the normal people that mm -hmm. Middle Tennessee people like to watch on your shows. You're getting way up there where, me for one, I'm going to quit watching your shows because I love to watch the Social Security shows, the uh, lawyer shows, sure. the down home shows that you used to have. So if you continue on this, uh, well, this is, going, I'm, I think I'm a lot of people, the reason I wanted to do this show is, you know, we don't advocate one way or the other on this, but I think in this day and age, especially with some of the crazy stuff out there, you know, the claims, you know, people getting tornado shelters, people getting bomb shelters, people that are concerned about their security. Security is the number one concern for a lot of folks. So this is an idea. You know, we're an open tornado forum for ideas. Tornado shelter makes a lot more sense than something like this. Tornado, tornado shelter be in your backyard or in your garage. And, and I think that's a good question. You know, let's let you, him address you can get that. There. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to drive 200 miles in the well, it's disaster. Okay, fair enough. And th that's a good question. I mean, th that's where I'm hitting on this is the, the, the romantic notion of this is good. But the practicality of it is what my concern is when I see this. And like I said, the website's getting some buzz. It's caught our attention. And I'm more intrigued by the concept, but the practicality. And that's what I think people like Rick and, uh, and Ron are going to wonder. Uh, how practical is this really, Dave? I mean, it's maybe something worth thinking about. But, you know, if there's a disaster. How's he going to drive all the way to the Cumberland Plateau? Okay. It can be done. It can um, not only... Um, will uh, this be available to uh, people from Nashville, but Atlanta is only a three hour drive. Mm -hmm. uh, Chattanooga is less than an hour drive. Sure. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, the only thing that's gonna keep you from getting there is yeah. if all the vehicles have been disabled. And I guess that would be an EMP pulse of some sort. An electromagnetic uh, pulse yep. or something like that. Um, right. but but you can get there. I know I can get to the, the location on less than half a tank of gas. Mm -hmm. All right. So what, what happens? Uh, okay, let's take a back road. Maybe it'll take three quarters of a tank of gas. Maybe I'll have to walk the last 50 miles. But when I get there, I'm going to be in a community of people that are like-minded, that are all prepared to defend themselves and their families. And as a community, we will be a very strong force to help each other, and not only ourselves, but our community. People in the immediate vicinity, um, you know, if this guy wants to weather the storm, hey, have at it, man. But uh, eventually, you know, uh, if you want to live in some hole in the ground and some bomb shelter in your backyard mm -hmm. and hope that your food stores will last, uh, okay, go ahead. But I, if you don't have farm to land, uh, land to farm on, mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, you know, w within six months a year, when your food does run out, you're in big trouble. Yeah, and, and yeah. And again, you're saying this this idea is something for in the worst case scenario. Is that it? One of the worst is, case scenarios. Because I think how much it's going to be to have to have someone to leave their home and that bad. It's nothing that we've really seen here locally at all, and we've had some bad floods and a tornado. Mm -hmm. So you're saying it's it's to be there as an insurance policy in the worst case scenario where you really have to get out. It is. It is. And it's the best insurance policy I think you can ever obtain for your family. 